All right, we're back with the turd burglar. Let's do this. So today we're gonna tackle one of the most annoying problems that I've had in a while, and that is, I'm pretty sure, a cracked flex plate. So today we're gonna find out for sure. So, symptoms that I'm having is that when you first start it up, it's totally quiet, it sounds fine. After you drive it for a while, you start getting this tick, 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 tick sound. You know, sounds like something's knocking or clacking or doing all kinds of bad crap, and it's it doesn't sound very good. Here's a slow idle. <laughs> kind of sounds like it's the oil pan. When you raise the engine RPM, the sound goes away. So once you start driving, you don't really hear it anymore. It's only when you're sitting at idle, you know, when you're, you're parked or whatever, that it's the loudest. Um, and then the other sign, like, so for me, when it's cold, when it's been sitting for a few days, it's quiet. Once it starts making the noise, you can turn the Jeep off, turn it right back on, it'll, it'll start making the noise right away. But it goes away with RPM, and it's not there all the time. So, let's see if it's here right now. My guess is probably not. But after you drive it for like 5-10 minutes, you'll get it. Yeah. Well, there's the littlest bit. Every now and then you hear a little tuck, 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 but... Yeah, it's pretty quiet right now. After you drive it for a while, you'll hear it. <coughs> it sounds like your freaking engine's about ready to explode and it's terrible. But, uh, yeah. If your engine sound is there all the time and it gets louder with RPM, doesn't ever disappear and it's always there. I had piston slap before, so you can see a whole video on what that sounds like. Lifter tap is usually quieter, but, yep. Today, we're getting down and dirty and really obnoxious. Because we get to play with this guy right here, the flex play. So, if you have an automatic transmission, like I do this AW4, you have a flex plate. For a manual, it's called a flywheel. I don't think the flywheels usually have these issues, it's usually more the flex plate. So, the problem is uh, where it bolts to the engine, you know, the part that you can't freaking see, that's usually where it cracks, that's where all the stress is. Um, if you're lucky, it might be one of these bolts. Maybe one of your bolts came loose and it's just tapping on the cover, ticka ticka ticka, but usually that sound happens all the time. I already checked my bolts, I already have two videos on me decking around with this thing, and I haven't come to any good conclusions. So, it's time to man up and pull the friggin' transmission out. So, man, is that a lot of fun. But before we talk about all that, let's see what a new one looks like, and hmm, some other problems we can run into. So, if you've ever owned a Renex before, you know that everything is different, everything is weird. And you should really have one of these things if you want to save all your headaches and troubles. Same thing applies for the flex plate. So, this is what a new one looks like. Yay! Fun fact, a lot of companies that make new flex plates for Renix, you know, the 87 to 90 guys, make the wrong frickin' flex plate. So, if we look at this, it's this is what the starter connects to. So, if this does a couple things. This part bolts to the engine. This part, uh, where the fuck? This part bolts to the uh, the torque converter. So this is what joins the transmission and engine together. And if you notice this big ring around here, this is what the starter engages to. So this is how the starter turns the engine. This is the, the meat and potatoes between everything. And if we'll flip it over, over here is our timing marks. So you can see how the engine actually runs. You have three of these, and they uh, line up with every piston pair. So you got, you know, one and six, you've got two and five, and you've got three and four, or some shit like that, whatever. But yeah, the issue is, aftermarket plates, the, the, um, the way that these are drilled, this will only fit on the engine one way. There's only one way that this thing will fit. So it's really important that this ring is aligned properly. And uh, most of the aftermarket companies that build these, this is off by like 40 degrees. So if you stack them one on top of each other, uh, easiest place to look is for one of these alignment marks. It'll be off. It'll be like way over here. So this entire ring is off by, you know, however many degrees. And that sucks. 
that sucks major butt when you're not paying attention and you think, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's good, it's great, let's put it all together, take the transmission out, put the transmission in, start it up, it idles kind of funny, and the second you give it gas, it stumbles and falls on its face. What a kick in the teeth that is. So, there are only a few companies that uh, I know of that actually make a proper flex plate, and they have to be like the factory, you know, overstock, basically. All the things you get from Advance Auto, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, all those fucking things, they're usually all bad. I might actually go, I don't know, I was thinking about going to buy one, just so we can see absolutely for certain how wrong this is, but we'll, we can compare that with the old flex plate later. Um, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. Right, so someone actually messaged me on Instagram, because uh, they had to go through all the crap um, that I'm about to do. The reason why I put this off for so long is because it's so hard to find a flex plate. I don't want to order through five, six different companies to finally find one that makes it. Uh, so he mentioned that uh, Jegs actually sells it, uh, the correct one, and so does uh, Vintage Jeep Parts. So I ordered Vintage Jeep Parts because it was actually a couple dollars cheaper uh, after tax or shipping or something. But here it is. This is everything on the box. It's got all the good things. Omex Ada, Rugged Ridge, Hello USA, all that. Yeah, they're all that company. But yeah, we got our 87 to 90 Jeep Cherokee XJ flex plate for an automatic transmission. Places original manufacturer number. So, yeah, you're going to find other companies that have the number, but it might not be the right one. So yeah, it's a really fun little shot in the dark for that. But anyway, hopefully this plate is good. We're going to take everything apart and we're going to replace it because there's a very good chance that somewhere right in this rainbow is going to be a giant crack. And, you know, if you put it off for long enough, eventually the whole thing separates and, oh yeah, then, ugh. I think that's what happened to my buddies. He ran it until the freaking thing broke and then he had to get it towed to a shop and, you know, pull it all apart. Nice little donut in the middle. So, there's a lot of work to replace this. It's going to suck. We're going to need a transmission jack, at the very least, to help get the damn thing in and out. But let's go over the basics, shall we? Okay. So, to get that sucker out, uh, we're going to obviously have to separate the engine and transmission. For me, the exhaust has got to come out. The exhaust is right over here, all up in this business, and there's no easy way to get the damn thing in and out. So, exhaust has to get dropped, we're going to take those out. Cool. Okay. Drive shafts, they gotta go because they're connected to the transfer case. After that, we have this cross member that has to get dropped so that we can actually move the transmission out. Uh, there's a bunch of bolts on the transmission that we have to uh, unbolt to separate the engine as well as the flex plate, so don't forget that. Those four bolts have to come out, so, you know, zip them out with whatever, rotate the engine up front with the freaking crank pulley so we can get all four of those out. So once everything's separated, you can pull the transmission back and then we can get to the bolts on the back of the flex plate to take it off the engine. Yay! And then we get to put it all back together again! Yay! Fucking kill me. Alright, so if you've not seen one before, this is what a transjax uh, looks like. It's got a handle and a big flat square thinger. And it's got some knobs so we can dial it around. So I've got it set up kind of like this, so hopefully with the chain on there, the weight should be kind of distributed evenly. I don't know, I kind of wish this uh, plate was even bigger than what it is. There's a safety chain that we're going to wrap around once we get this a little lower, just to hold it in place so that way it doesn't fall off. But for now, we're doing a fun little game of lower this one a bit, lower this one a bit, lower that one a bit, and you know, just to try to get it lower so we can get access to everything. So, yeah. Ugh. We need a motorized one of these things. Come on, you fuck. Ugh. Okay. Well, there you have it. Transmission's free. Smooth sailing, partner. Easy does it. Okay, so if you didn't die doing that, <coughs> then you should have found your prize. Yay! Oh, so there's a transmission. This is that wonderful torque converter everyone keeps talking about. Gives you the lockies and all that good stuff. So, let's put on our glove and figure out why our engine doesn't like to be quiet.
All right, boys and girls. Do you hear the flex plate? Yes, yes we do. That's all it is. All I'm doing is pushing forward and backwards just the slightest bit. So I guess the metal's cracked and it, it just clicks like the top of like a Snapple bottle or something like that. So that's all it is. Cool. Let's buzz this off and see the bastard for what it's worth. All right, if I recall, these are big. Three quarter inch, maybe? Yeah. Time to bust it loose. All right, holy shit. No kidding. Well, there you go. Look at that. An engine. Fuck okay, yeah, buddy. Congratulations, you are at halfway point. And just like any good Haynes man you would say, installation is reverse of removal. Thanks. Well, would you look at there. Hold on to flex plate. And look at the nastiness going on here. Ain't that beautiful? Yeah, that's what we like. Remember kids, crack is bad. So that's a click clocking right there. Look at that, you can see it freaking zigzag and jump all around, so yeah. That's exciting, and the best part is this, this goofy little plate here covers it so you can't really see it you have to you have to take it out to know if it's bad so yeah ain't that friggin delightful okay at least now we know flex plate it was now let's see if the new one actually matches it's part two okay so here it is the, the friggin moment of truth right here this is why i've been putting off this job for so long because i'm so worried Renix guys don't have it easy, okay? We're like, you know, the odd bunch. We don't have very good support, especially on the aftermarket scene. And one of the biggest issues is with the flex plate. Because a lot of companies make them wrong. So you go through all the effort to replace a flex plate, put the transmission in, start it up, and you get a bunch of crap. And you're like, really? This is not a job you want to do twice, partner. So, this is what we're looking at. This big ring down here is what the starter rides on. This is what actually spins the engine to start it. On top of it is our timing marks, okay? So all these big cutouts, these are the timing marks that the uh, crank position sensor actually reads. This is what, you know, actually does the, the timing stuff. So if you'll notice, we have three big cutouts here, okay? Where we're missing, I don't know if it's one tooth or two tooth. I think that's, that's two teeth missing, but whatever. The, this is the gap that it's looking for. Uh, and this is a cylinder pair. But I'm pretty sure this is uh, some kind of timing mark because they both have one in that area. So that's a good way to line it up. And then you can see these outer ones here are for the flex plate uh, to torque converter. These I think are just balancing holes or something. But yeah, this is what you want to look at. You want to make sure that your, your old one and your new one have the correct timing. So this might not be perfectly uh, you know centerized or whatever, but... Let it be known that that is lined up properly. Being off like, you know, a degree or two, it's not bad. The, when they're when they're wrong, uh, you'll probably see it where it's off like this or something. Like, you'll notice there's a very large gap. So you have to check and make sure that the um, your timing ring is actually on there properly. So yeah, I'll make sure to provide links down below and give credit for uh, the madman that actually ordered like five or six himself just to finally find one. He said the Jegs was good and uh, Vintage Jeep Parts was good. I went with Vintage Jeep Parts and that works. So you are the man, 88 Comanche man or something like that. I'll, again, you'll get credit down below, but thank you so much for saving me time because I don't really have a lot of time right now. So anyway, we're going to get the book. Uh, we're going to see what our torque specs are. I think it's like 110. Uh, for these bolts, and we're going to toss this thing back in. Sweet. Alright. Speak of the devil. 
This thing is useful sir, for uh, some stuff. So if we look over here, flex plate to drive, flex pl flywheel or drive plate bolts is 105 foot pounds. So yeah, you're gonna want to crank them down. And uh, I'm gonna add some blue Loctite just so that they stay in there. So we don't ever want them coming out. That would be a real problem. So spin the wheel of fortune and see if you get your putt of gold. Okay, that actually lines up. That's cool. All right. Now, this is also different. So, probably should have matched this one up first. Right here. So our timing mark for, I, I don't know if that's cylinder one or what that is, but I don't know. You can match that ring with that and you're good. Beautiful. Okay. Ugh. Now we can add the other ones. And obviously don't torque them down until you get all of them threaded in, just in case you get something backwards. You start to learn that one the hard way. Oh, speaking of finishing the job when it's right, let's see if we can put that, um, uh, that dust shield back in. All right, so hopefully this will go in. Otherwise, we'll have to take it back out. Oh, thank God, okay. All right, cool. So that sits somewhere like that. Beautiful, okay, yep, we're good. We can continue. I don't know if it matters, but I'm going to torque this, and uh, I wonder how this, this works. I've never had to do a six-load torque pattern before. I'm going to assume it's kind of like a star. So now they're snug. Now we get a torque to torque them to 105, uh, but we're going to have to put a, um, like a breaker bar or something on the uh, crankshaft pulley to uh, hold this in place, because otherwise we're not going to be able to tighten it. Either that or put something through one of these holes. Okay, beautiful. All right, flex plate is all torqued up. Yay. Ugh. Yeah, method worked pretty well. Can't complain. Okay, so just in case we ever need to look at this, that is about how big that is. So that is an inch and three quarters long. And uh, yeah, that's the glorious E12 right there. What a pain in the ass. See it says it is. I'd love to get a replacement, but uh, it's Memorial Day, so the damn fucking Ace Hardware's closed. But I'm gonna assume it's a three Ace, and uh, whatever freaking regular thread size that is. So I was able to find a couple of replacement bolts wherever the hell I just put them down at. Oh, there we go. This one's too short, and this one's longer, but it should be fine because all this is a uh, bell housing. So there's a pretty big thick bit of bell housing and then the rest is threads. This one we get about two or three threads on, but not, not ideal. So I'd rather have a little longer and if it's too long we'll just chop off a little bit. So I'll run that in there and just get this done because I need this uh, back together. Alright. CPS removed just in case. We all know how freaking sensitive these things are. Make sure the cooler lines don't get stuck. Make sure the shift line doesn't get stuck. Make sure none of the freaking things are where they shouldn't be. Ugh. Does the speedometer cable have to go anywhere? Important. Okay, so that was step one. I don't know if you could see that, but I had to get the bell housing around the flex plate. So now, 
kind of just squeeze them back together. So there's two alignment dowel pins on either side. That should help you get it lined up. I'm actually surprised with how well this thing is uh, willing to work with me right now. Just the fact that I can move it by hand, that's insane. You know, the fun part is just kind of gently caressing this until it wants to go in. Now to help us along, I'm going to attempt to try to tighten this bolt. Then we'll move over to the other side. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, cool. We're going to move over to the other side so we can get that other bolt started. Okay, so now the fun part of trying to line up the uh, flex plate and torque converter. Um, I was thinking about doing that when I was trying to put it in, but it's just, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, this one's going to be a bit tricky. We've got our big wrench on the, uh, the crank pulley. But, um, I don't know if I can really get you where I need to be. But when we turn the, um, the engine, the flex plate follows, but so does the torque converter, I think. So we'll have to figure out what we can do to, uh, stop the torque converter spinning. It's lining up with one of the balancing holes, but, uh, it doesn't really help us with the rest of them. I'll let you know if I figure something out. It's gonna be interesting. Alright, cool. I think I got lucky. <laughs> I just spun it and then I started noticing when I, once I got to this side that um, it finally, um, the torque converter was staying still. I think these bolts get 40 foot pounds, so not a whole lot. But to make sure they don't back out, I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on there, because this isn't one of those things you want to have fall out on you. Because these bolts are kind of hard to find. They're special bolts, you can't just put any old bolt in there. Um, so yeah, alright, Loctite it, and I'm not going to torque that one down yet because I want to get them all in, and then we torque them. So, cool. So, we want our bolt to be in that area right there, right past the thing. The resistance is going to change as you're going through compression strokes, but... Alright, get it right there. Now, we're going to take this and flip it around so that it's loosening it. We're going to use this to hold against the engine. And then with our other hand, we're going to take our torque wrench, set to 40 foot-pounds, and uh, slop that on there. It's a lot easier when you have a flex exhaust, you can just bend out of the way. It's fucking great, man. Beautiful. All right, there we go. We'll be there. Torque converter, this friggin' torque down. Drivetrain is basically done now. All I have to do is put the cover back on. Um, exhaust and drive shafts, but as you can hear, it's about to get pretty shitty. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna call it before I take an unexpected shower. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Cool. Vernas, Vernas. Okay, so we got our battery cable uh, reconnected, so everything's all nice and good there. Um, the only thing we got to remember is we have to replace any transmission fluid that leaked out. Um, but yeah, everything is good. Screw it. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we blow up. Part one. Ignition on. Let's see what Rem Rem has to say. No codes found, cool. Alright. Douchey crank. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, boy. She starts and she runs. We did it. A little bit of a rattle-tattle thumper somewhere, but that's just, uh, you know, like, pushing vibration stuff. Got a little smoke, but that's expected from all the transmission fluid that leaked all over the exhaust. Yeah, it really just sounds like exhaust farts. Yeah. 
exhaust is rattling against the uh, transmission, possibly. The muffler sounds a little quieter now that we uh, actually filled up the top, so that's good. Awesome. Well, I can't complain, man. She's back together. We'll have to take it on a long drive to know for sure, but she's Gucci, man. Hell yeah, brother. Woo! Oh, man, she is back. Oh, I'm so happy. It is good to be back. Ugh. Well, I guess through hell or high water, we're gonna be testing the Jeep out. <laughs> it's raining. Oh boy. Good luck, baby. You can do it. Yeah, buddy. The Jeep is back, baby. Oh my God, just in time for Mother Nature to piss on all our fun, huh? I'm prepared now, boy. Yeah. This is what we call Jeep life right her. <laughs> Dude, it's like a fucking flash flood out here, man. Oh, god damn. Gotta live South Jersey. When you live near the shore, you live near the shore. Mmm. 